Abominable. 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 Everybody to Tavern Talk by Initial Reaction. I'm Philip, and joining me once again this week, Chris Pistol. Hello. Hey, thanks for being here, Chris. Appreciate oh, it. No problem. Yeah. Well, I know I really appreciate it <laughs> because this week we are talking about abominable. I'm gonna abominable. Ab abominable. abominable. We're talking. About, we're talking about abominable, yeah. and um, you know. Not a whole lot of expectation going into this one. It's I a, don't know what you're talking about. I had to fight people to get this <laughs> position, Philip. <laughs> Everyone was wanting to go see a bomb and bomb. You, I, I was flooded with requests. Hey, I, you know what? Forget. I had to hide some bodies. Forget yeah. Hustlers, Ad Astra, and Joe Grout. I need to see Abominable. Yeah, I mean, I never get to go see them to the movies anymore because I've been in film school for like the past three months. So, of course, I wanted to rush out. To You've been in film school, but you don't get to see as many movies. No. Oh. No, that's the, the, the trick. It's, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, you got to see one tonight. Abominable. Technically. It's I the did. new uh, <laughs> DreamWorks animation movie. Mm -hmm. um, and it is, well, I mean, I guess we'll just throw out there what it's about. It's about a um, little girl. Not actually, you know, it's not a little girl. These are like, like... Older teens going into adulthood, yeah, kind of, uh, yeah, yeah, which yeah. was a little surprising. Um, but no, this girl, uh, they're in China, and she has um, lost her father. Sorry if that spoils too much, but you find that out pretty quick. <laughs> um, she's lost her father, so she's kind of dealing with like this void in her life, and is filling her life with all these day-to-day -day chores, trying to you know earn enough money so that she can take this trip that her and her father had planned to go on. And then stumbles upon a yeti, like you do, like you do, um, that is being sought after by you know this big evil corporation, right. and they want to make all the monies off of it, like and, you do. Yeah, and so obviously the girl and the yeti come together, find solace in one another, mm -hmm. and kind of help each other uh, find their way home, both it's literally a, and metaphorically. It's a tale as old as time. It is. Up. But no, initial reaction, Chris, what did you think of Abominable? I thought Abominable was <laughs> right. perfectly adequate. I thought it was really sweet. Yeah, well, yeah, I think that's the best thing the movie has going for it, is that yeah. it is genuinely sweet at times. Yeah. Um, so the first maybe like 20 minutes of the movie, I really wasn't feeling it. No, okay. Uh, no, it just felt like a very by the numbers, like, sort of like, here's our book of animated movie cliches and we're just gonna hit every single one. Um, I didn't I didn't like the, the, the side kids. At, Did no. you come to like them at all? <sighs> Not really. Oh, that's <laughs> disappointing. It is, but that's uh, <laughs> yeah. You're disappointed. And no, the yeah, movie, yeah, yeah. I'm disappointed in you for not I was, liking. I was kind of thinking of a couple things. I, you know, like I hate to to do this to movies to say like, oh, here's what I would have done different. But right. I was I was kind of thinking of a few things that maybe would have made a little bit more sense, or maybe would have connected with me a little bit more. I'll talk about those in a second. But um, yeah, uh, just I feel like also we didn't really get to know the main character very well. It took at least it took a while. Like. You know, you kind of are introducing these things like the she has this violin that she plays right. and this connection with her father, but I don't know, we didn't I didn't really like feel that connection as strongly. It kinda of felt like there needed to be and this is kind of more of what Disney has done a ton, but a scene maybe at the beginning, like in the first five minutes, 
where you see like her with her father and like you actually okay. see the father and you kind of get that connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then maybe, you know, it's the tragic Disney Disney trope I was of like say, yeah. of one of the <laughs> parents dies scene. within the first five minutes. Right. Uh, you get that scene. But uh, just something to kind of connect with the the characters a little bit more. Um, yeah, the side characters, I don't know. We just had like the the really hyper kid, Pang. kid, Pang, yeah, yeah. I really like Pang. Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> and then the other guy, uh, what was his name? Um, the other guy's Jai, J? Jin. Jin, yeah, yeah. Uh, every time he took out his phone, he just wanted to slap it, <laughs> slap it out of his hand. I hate it in movies, especially animated movies, when characters are like, Making phone jokes and current pop. They're trying to be stuff. current, Chris. It's trying to get with the times Oy. with the children's. It's yeah. with the children's. My goodness. But anyway, uh, but the the thing, the connection between the main character and the Yeti, yeah, uh, is fairly strong. And then once you kind of once they get out of the city and go on this sort of adventure to return the Yeti back um, to the Himalayas, I think things start getting a little bit more fun, a little bit more loose. Um, a little bit more imaginative, yes, imaginative as well. I didn't they introduced that the Yeti has powers. Right. Um, powers that seem to kind of just be convenient for whatever the plot needs it to be. Um, a, they define it a little bit. I, I, I would yeah. agree that it was a little, uh, they were used conveniently, but then when it came time for like, hey, this would be a great time to use the powers, they right. didn't shy away from it. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay. Yeah, okay. you kind of have this moment towards the end of the film mm -hmm. where they need to get from one place to another place pretty quickly. <laughs> and so they use the powers together and it's like, huh, it been nice to have done that like right at the beginning. But visually, <laughs> visually it was awesome. Yeah, visually it's very interesting. This is like a minor nitpick with me and just like animated films, but uh, like I thought the like kind of surroundings and different visual stuff they did was really interesting. Yeah. But the character designs were so bland to me. Like they looked like, like the emoji like kind of characters, the faces. Too. Yeah, just like gen or like the Wii characters, like yeah. from like Wii oh, sports and stuff like that. I can just see that. Yeah, that's just true. Generic, featureless faces, <laughs> kind of a thing. I can see that. Yeah, yeah. It, which is weird because you, it does feel like you know not to get into this too much, but like this is set in China. It's not every yeah. day that you get a major studio animated movie set in China featuring yeah, like yeah. an all Asian cast, and like it's yeah, you can't. Totally tell they're supposed to be Asian characters, right? Yeah, so yeah, that yeah, I get, I see what you're saying there. But um, no, this does come from uh, it's uh, written and directed by uh, Jill Colton. Um, she only has one prior directing credit to her, and it's Open Season. I don't know if you oh, remember okay. that one from a while ago. Yeah. It's the bear and the deer, right. and the Martin Lawrence and the Ashton Kutcher. Yeah, the there you go. celebrities of today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Super relevant. <laughs> um, so no. Uh, Again, I went in like zero expectation. I, I hadn't yeah, even watched the trailer for it, honestly. I, I didn't know what I was getting into. Um, but yeah, I totally agree with the part where, um, or the part you were saying about once they get to the adventure is really where the movie kind of finds its groove and, mm -hmm. and takes off. And um, yeah, no, I, I really liked the, just kind of the introduction of the powers and then what it was able to do with that visually. There's some cool stuff with like, blueberries and dandelions and like this field yeah. of flowers that uh, is, is played like the ocean and stuff and it's just I mean it looked really like it was really well done yeah. you know I, I just appreciated it from a visual standpoint which uh, should I guess kind of be a given with animation yeah. with computer animation these days but I'm yeah. still always surprised at like just the textures and environments the how, how, how yeah. authentic it looks but um, but yeah, I can, I can, I, I hear where you're saying about the characters and kind of a lack of connection with them. Right. Um, I, I felt more of a um, connection with the main character than I guess you did. I was, I was into um, this journey of her trying to figure out how to keep growing while this person, her father, who had been a huge part of her childhood, isn't there to help her continue to grow. Um, and and they kind of connect that journey with the. Uh, with the violin and yeah. you know, play that through for the, for the um, like the emotional core of the movie, and I just I don't know I, I, I bought into that part of it. I liked it and I liked Pang. Um, I can I can see where you're coming from with Jin. Like I get <laughs> it, I get it. But uh, but Pang was just like the voice performer. I want to specifically um, call him out. Um, yeah. Albert Sai, Albert Sai, and he's got to be like a preteen himself or something because he was just. 
off the wall all over the place. Voice was cracking. Like yeah, I just love the, the authenticity time. of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the entire time. Uh, we should mention uh, Chloe Bennett, uh, who you might know from Agents of Shield, is the voice of Yi, who is the main character. And then on the other side of things, the the big corporate baddies we were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah. You have um, Eddie Izzard as. Eddie, Eddie Izzard got me laughing a couple times, especially just because it's Eddie Izzard and his character's so yeah. off the wall though. <laughs> yeah, I've loved him for a long time, and uh, yeah, I just put him in any. As soon as I heard his voice, I knew exactly that it was him, and I was like, oh good. Yeah, I had to. <laughs> We've ask got you. someone good in this. Yes. Uh, I was like, as soon as, when he started talking, I was like, oh, who is that? I know that, and like it was. You were like, like you, could you tell were like, you were like, who is that? I was like, Eddie Izzard. Eddie Izzard. Eddie Izzard. Yeah, he's like this uh, wealthy explorer or. He used to be like more of an explorer, and now he's just like this collector of all these rare animals and artifacts yeah. and things. And uh, yeah, his character was just kind of bonkers and doesn't exactly go where you expect yeah, it's, it to. Yeah, it's more mind for comedy I yeah. think, than anything else. Um, there's kind of a bit of a twist towards the end. It's, it's kind of ridiculous, yeah. but it's it's kind of serves to I don't know. Just, I don't know what it's there it's for there, or there. why it's there, but you it's know, it's there. <laughs> not everybody's, is, you know. Don't judge them. Don't judge the book by its cover. I, is yeah. I guess the, the the theme, the obvious thing they're going for I in guess, that kids yeah. movie. Um, yeah, but it's funny. At DreamWorks, you know, they've kind of been known for, well, at least early in their kind of career, they were known for being the more like wacky comedy and yeah, pop yeah. culture reference animation studio. Yeah, they were Shrek and right, right, right. But as that as time has gone on, and some of their bigger successes have been like the How to Train Your Dragon, yeah, sort of the Country more Panda. yeah, sort of the more like traditional, like leaning on emotional. Story yeah. arcs that seems like this kind of wants to go more in that vein, kind of yeah. lean in that direction. Yeah, and it so. has um, no, it definitely does. Like I've I've really kind of adored the How to Train Your Dragon movies, and um, they they were very well done in terms of um, not just animation, but like the emotional ties to or throughout the story. And um, I, yeah, this you know I don't think this is necessarily on that first How to Train Your Dragon or Kung Fu Panda level. Yeah. Um, but but it's it's like yeah like I said it's very sweet it has um, it does have the obvious like kids movie themes of um, you know well I guess not in, obvious a kid in their animal uh, well, yeah turn the animal for yeah. the wild but it's uh, well and I was because I guess it's not too obvious but like you know the dealing with loss thing yeah, like yeah. it does deal with that but it also deals in like perseverance and yeah. and um, you know not giving up and that kind of thing which is always. Nice to hear. We had a couple of kids in, in our theater watching it, um, and they seemed to enjoy it. And it was just like, yeah, this is very wholesome, very sweet, just all around like a, a fine time, <laughs> adequate. Just yes. yeah, like you said. Look at it being it's, adequate. It's it is it is kind of like right there down the middle in terms of what you expect from an animated movie when you take your kids on a Saturday afternoon. Like, oh yeah, that was fine. I didn't mind paying a matinee price for it. Sure, but. Um, no, uh, anything else? Uh, no, I think that's it. Okay, well, moment of truth then. What out of five stars would you give Abominable? Ooh. I'm splitting on this because, like I said, you know, for other people, you know, for families and everything, I think this is a perfectly, like, good, acceptable film to take your kids to. Mm -hmm. So I think for that kind of demographic, maybe I'd say, like, yeah, go see it. You know, like, maybe don't pay you know, full price or anything like that, but definitely a matinee, and if your kids want to see it, go see it. So maybe three stars yeah. for that, and then maybe like two and a half just for me. Just for, yeah. yeah. I, I, I liked it. I'm going to go three and a half. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was... Uh, oh, my stars. So. <laughs> I thought it was, like I said, I thought it was really sweet. I thought it was really well done. Um, and I think, you know, if you're either of a certain age or even... Um, there's a lot of good humor in it, too. Like, I laughed a lot. I didn't necessarily cry, but you know, it was it was touching it enough that I would say, yeah, it's 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 kind of the whole package. So I'm gonna go three and a half. I enjoyed it. Um, I know. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep you at three three for Chris and take three, three. Yeah, three and a half for me. I, I think we would definitely say at least at a matinee, check out Abominable. It's a good it's a good one to take the kids to if you have nothing to do on the weekend. And, uh, you know, you want to get them all sugared up on candy and, uh, and Coke. And so well, let's face it, all. your kids are just going to want to go see it, too, yeah, again. That's true. That's true. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. Like, I didn't see it with my kids tonight, but if my daughter was like, oh, I really want to see the Yeti movie. Um, You'd I'm be like, like, which one? I saw 
a monster. <laughs> I'll be like, we have small foot at home. <laughs> uh, no, I, I would say, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing it again. And if you were concerned about a comparison between, uh, you know, oh, didn't a Yeti movie just come out? Uh, you know, that being small Why foot. It, uh, it did, but uh, this is very different. It's a totally different story. So um, even if you've seen that, even if they liked it, yes, they'll like this one too, um, but it is uh, completely different. It just happens to share, um, you know, the animal creature or whatever you want to call it. I don't even know, man. Anyway, anything else? That's all I got. That's all you got. <laughs> all right, well, there you go. Thanks for uh, checking out the review. Definitely check out the rest of the channel if you've seen any other recent releases. Uh, we probably did a review for it, so subscribe, like, hit the notifications, all that good stuff. You could watch the review for Godzilla, King of the Monsters. That's true. Or... That just came out on Blu ray. Exactly. So or you, you could go. watch the review for. Um, you don't even remember. <laughs> uh, well, any of them really. <laughs> any of them. Yeah. But um, yeah, you know why we get to review these though every week? Tell me, Philip. Because Movie Tavern is a great place to come to watch movies and have a full experience at the movie theater. So true. And they're kind enough to let us shoot a, a, our little review show in here. So thanks to Movie Tavern. If you're near one, definitely check it out. It's a really cool experience. Fine dining, fine viewing, comfy seating. All you could ever ask for. Milkshakes. Milkshakes, yeah. There's, I mean. I'll drink your milkshake. I was gonna make it there, we'll be. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. No, 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 no. You leave those to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll do that. Go ahead. I drink your milkshake. I drink it up! I just did. Oh, you did it. Okay. I drink your milkshake. Oh, so okay. that's it. Sorry. The reference. Not bad. All right. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for checking us out. Be sure to check back next week. We'll have a new review of the biggest release. So thanks once again, and we'll see you next time.